when you have people power and you want to do things behind closed doors, you kill your people power. When you don't have an agenda, I mean, all these BLM signs and these fools don't have the sense to put some trillions behind it and see who keeps the signs up. And I'd be willing to bet these people keep their signs up because white people respect, at least the ones that have the BLM signs, I think they respect competence more than a figurehead. And if you make a real um, case for the trillions, if you make a detailed database case, and I know that's asking a lot because ain't too many people going rat a tat tat with the data, but ADOS, but if, you know, it's not hard for them to have done it. it had they done it, those signs would stay up, the bumper stickers would stay up, the cup holders and all that shit would stay up. I just got something to get off my chest because it seems like there's some things that people didn't touch on as much when they talked about, well, one major thing that they didn't talk about as much. I think one person did speak on it a little bit, but I'm talking about what you're going to see right here. Black Lives Matter's letter to Biden. To the new president. Now what. A few people have mentioned. Is that. It's bad politics. It shows that they don't understand politics. Because they should have been. Making demands. Beforehand. And I, I think there's some truth to that. There's definitely some truth to that. And, and from the primaries to uh, the presidential election. I'd even say they should have been doing this uh, to local candidates. Like they should have, they should have been had an agenda and should have been using it beforehand as a litmus. The fact that they didn't, but now they want to write a letter to, you know, saying what they want. Yeah, that's problematic. But let's say I'm just going to, for the heck of it, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to suggest that it wasn't worth asking Donald Trump or pitting Trump against the Democrats because Trump is a, a crazy fascist, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't necessarily believe that. Uh, it, maybe in the last five months or so. But before then, I'm like, I, look, this this happens. You you have to unfortunately approach whoever and whenever. I agree with Ice Cube. You got to go to whoever is in power. This is your employee. You you question them. You tell them what you want. Whoever's trying to be your employee, yeah, you you have your litmus. You have your agenda. That they didn't have an agenda beforehand. People have touched on that. But if you read the letter. Even if I can kind of excuse that when I say Trump's crazy or it's ran its course. There's one thing about that letter that shows that BLM. And I've said this before, but they really don't understand power and they don't have a vision for black power. Because. They did one thing, and, and Vet Carnell, I think, kind of talked about it, but I was half asleep when I was listening to her, so I didn't really, I can't say much detail, how much detail she went into this. But if you read the letter, they ask for, they request a meeting, and they don't give any specifics, and that's the exact opposite of what they should do. But you do this if you're trying to empower yourself behind closed doors. You do this if you're trying to make a deal to empower yourself. You don't do this if you're interested in Black Power's meta. Because their leverage is not meeting with anyone. I can show you their leverage. I can walk down the street and show you 
that people have BLM written on their car. They have BLM signs. They have, if you drive around enough, you you might see a BLM protest. The great majority of these people are white. And it's not just uh, liberal cities. It's not just Portland, Seattle, Albany, Austin. I'm not saying it's super popular, but you walk around enough in white neighborhoods and you will see BLM shit. You don't, if you're trying to make a real power move, you don't need to sit. You see the moment they, they want, they want to make, have a meeting and not have a demand, a clear demand. They kill the people power that they have. I mean, that's the one thing that BLM has is you can't accuse them of being robots or anything like that. It has people popularity. It has enough people power to where you can just say, hey, this is what we want. And walk away from it. Now, I would say you got to talk teens of trillions. I would say you got to have a a plan that involves. You might as well go with what Bob Johnson is going with. 16 trillion over, I would say, over more than 100 years. And of course, it would have to be inflation adjusted because really... That's not as much as as it seems, you know, 70 years from now. I'd say 90% of that should come in the form of payments slowly. And again, inflation adjusted. In addition to that, there should be a bunch of other things. with that 10% whole bunch of other things now I say that because if if, uh, Bob Johnson can make can say this and really not get a lot of pushback I mean I've seen forums where it's like a billionaire BET dude you know wants to wants reparations in the form of 16 trillion and surprisingly the comments aren't crazy I've jumped into the comments and, you know, broke it down that really this is if if it's inflation adjust adjusted, who knows how much should it be? I don't know. It'd probably be like 30 trillion. Um, And even then, over 120 years or so, 30 trillion is is piss, you know, and it'd be be more than 30 trillion. It'd probably be like 50. But over 120 years, because. One thing I've noticed, just with with current uh, dollar value, one trillion over ten years is nothing. So ten trillion over a hundred years is really nothing. That that's very easy for the U.S. to budget. That's a a simple budget. We would spend more money on on all sorts of junk while doing this. So. And be the power goes into this better, but when you take it behind closed doors, you kill your leverage because now BLM stands for a lack of transparency behind closed doors, working with Biden, doing what? You don't go work with them to do something. You already have to have a clear objective first. Because otherwise, not only are you not transparent, you have no accountability because it's like, well, you're not trying to accomplish anything, so we can't judge you for anything. But if you put trillions, let's say you put 16 trillion um, inflation adjusted over 120 years, right? Let's just throw that out there. 
Now all of those BLM signs, all of those BLM cups, all of those rallies. And another thing they should say is that since people want to donate and they want to pay reparations like companies, corporations, and they want that tax write off or maybe they, you know, they, they want the publicity and they got the money. That's a good way to invest. You should have a, a reparations bank account by now, BLM, that they don't have a bank reparations bank account and that they want to meet behind closed doors, screams, let, let us be the gatekeepers and give us jobs. And it's not in, it's not going to be anything you can, that can be accountable for because they could do a few good things. It's not going to necessarily change anything as far as the wealth gap or, I mean, cause really if you're not changing the wealth gap, you're not changing the quality of life because everything is, um, is measured in American costs. Like you can change things and make America better, but that only w- um, factors with America compared to something else. It doesn't address that you have a racial caste system in America. And when you're trying to meet in private with people, black people would be wise not to trust, even if they just wanted to get rid of with it, rid of Trump. That doesn't necessarily mean you want to trust Biden. He doesn't really have the best track record. So, okay. I guess I really don't have to say more than that. I mean, that's the issue is why are they trying to set up a meeting? They don't have demands. They don't have an objective. Uh, Well, they have a very vague objective. We want you to address racism and and, uh, police brutality. Okay, if they do that and you still have the... um, the the thing that caused that because those are just symptoms largely I mean that to me you can make the argument that uh, Trump at least at this point is um, crazy and you know not going to get anything from him okay so let's just get rid of the, we'll do we'll pay the country a favor we'll get rid of fascism we'll get fresh eyes on COVID so now we make demands okay I'm I'm not really with that but they didn't even do that. They're making a plea to be inside the House gatekeepers. It's a, a House Negro plea. And that's basically what I'm expecting from BLM. I don't know if you've seen that BLM coloring book. Um, supposedly it was just written by somebody who isn't like officially on the BLM payroll. So I'm not going to get on it too much other than to say you put that image out there to where that coloring book would be acceptable. So even if it isn't someone who's inside, op, um, you know, making decisions for BLM, you put that image out there. So that's all I want to say. Um, and it's par for the course. I mean, if you saw... Uh, that interview with Ice Cube, Roland Martin, and um, how they brought in Alicia Garza when Ice Cube was talking about working with people for reparations. What the fuck? I mean, Roland Martin is so pathetic at this point. Why are you going to have Alicia Garza? They they don't even, BLM doesn't even mention reparations on their website. They, they're, they don't really deal with reparations. Ice Cube, with what he did in California and just approaching... Um, the world really and then they came to him but approaching the world creating a black agenda that's done more at least in in terms of reparations than BLM has ever done so that whole gatekeeper booby trap um you know Ice Cube's a better man than me I would have really read it to him I'm like why would I want to work with no no offense Alicia Garza but why would I want to work with you when you've been a detriment by lying about ADOS um, saying that ADOS is homophobic and, and with BLM, you don't really do reparations advocacy. You just interfere. So you're not the person I would want to go to. This is ridiculous. It would make more sense for me to go to Trump it, as for nothing else than leverage um, and saying, hey, you know, I'm negotiating with both you. And, and technically he wasn't negotiating with any, you know, any of them. He was just showing them their plan, his plan. But it would make more sense for him to actually have walked into the White House and say, hey, Trump, this is a plan. You're the president. You want to get the black vote. 
And if he would have embraced that plan instead of coming up with the, the goddamn platinum plan, he might have he might still be in business. I mean, he would have had to do it a long time ago, though. You know, they've already done the recount in Georgia. He still lost this. This election was is an um from what I've seen. You can talk about De- De- uh, Debbie Washington Soltz's election. You know, that, if you want to talk about Democrats cheating, they, they cheat independents and Democrats. They don't really have the means to cheat Republicans and get away with it. There's too many eyes on that. There's too many people to be going to jail. They ain't trying to go to jail for Joe Biden. So, Biden's president. And you got too many Republicans that just ain't going to let a coup go down. So, Biden's president. When you have people power and you want to do things behind closed doors, you kill your people power. When you don't have an agenda. I mean, all these BLM signs and these fools don't have the sense to put some trillions behind it. And see who keeps the signs up. And I'd be willing to bet these people keep their signs up because white people respect, at least the ones that have the BLM signs, I think they respect competence more than a figurehead. And if you make a real um, case for the trillions, if you make a detailed database case, and I know that's asking a lot because ain't too many people going rat a tat tat with the data, but ADOS, but if, you know, it's not hard for them to have done it. it had they done it, those signs would stay up, the bumper stickers would stay up, the cup holders and all that shit would stay up. If they had a bank account, people, it would be accruing every second. Might not do much, but you could at least take what you have and maybe take a percentage of that and, and, and lobby with it or whatever. So, that's it.